Hallelujah. In this place, the Lord is present. My friend, join us as we welcome the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, we welcome you. We acknowledge you. We thank you for your presence on the earth today. As we talk about you, move with wonders. Stir up our heart to know you deeply. Grant us joy that surpasses all understanding. Oh, my friend, today I decided to come and be on Facebook talking to you, my friend. This is a very special week all the way until the month of May, the end of May. Not too long ago, we celebrated Passover, Easter for some people. And after Jesus is resurrected, he spoke to the disciples, asking them, commanding them to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. So God wants us today to talk about the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Do you know him? Do you have a relationship with him? Is it really important to acknowledge him and to fellowship with him? My friend, yes, it's a very, very important. You know, God never leaves us alone. In the beginning of time, I'm talking about the Bible time, because God has always been, and He will always be. In the book of Genesis, we see God the Father. God spoke. Jesus is the word of God. God speak. Jesus is the word of God. And we see that the Holy Spirit was hovering on the surface of the water. The Holy Spirit has always been. And he is one of the Godhead the Trinity, Trinity, Father God, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You have heard the term three in one. They are always in unity. They always work in unity, in agreement, in harmony. They have a different personality. And when you really get to know them, you can tell who is there. They do different things, but they are always united. One is spirit, hallelujah. In the beginning, God did not create you without the agreement of a Father God, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are always in agreement. When God created you, He created you in His image, and this is why He said, let us make men. Let us. Who is us? Father God, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are always in agreement. They have meetings. They decide upon things. There are times that 
one of them can do something without consulting the other but major decisions such as creating you they come in agreement let us create men so they created us they decide to put us here on the earth and they decide to put us in the charge of this earth when a man was created God never leaves him alone do you know why my friend it's because it's because if God leaves you without him, without Jesus, without the Holy Spirit, you cannot be. Always throughout the history of the whole world, you have never seen planet Earth and man without someone present. And in the beginning of time, we see God coming in the cool of the day, in the garden, fellowshipping with Adam and Eve. We know that they sinned. And when they sinned, a separation came between God and the man that he loved so much. It broke his heart. But he will not give up. Just like you, an artist, you make a vessel and someone or something comes and try to destroy the vessel you're not going to give up because it was your idea it was your creativity god did not give upon us even though that separation happened god always came to men in every generation on the earth there was either a prophet or a judge or a man of God through whom God will speak and that person will let know the people what is the will of God that he has always been the presence of God here on the earth things would however change when Jesus came he truly was here on the earth in the physical body we have the evidence today, if you go to the Holy Land, there is the place where he was born, Bethlehem. There is the place where he lived. You can find the grave, but the grave is empty. Mm -hmm. Praise God, hallelujah. God never leaves you. God never forsakes you. When Jesus is about to go, He took a speech and he spoke to the disciple in John 14, verse 16. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. In the Trinity, there is a hierarchy. Father God Almighty, God on the throne, and then his son, Jesus. Jesus submit to the Father. Do you know that Jesus go before the Father on your behalf, ask for you and pray for you? That's how much he loves you. We always ask people to pray for us and it's a great thing. But I want you to know that Jesus prays for you. You are his friend. Never, never despair. Never, never think that you are alone. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Here, the Lord is about to go back to heaven. And he tells the disciple that he's going to ask the Father, so that he gives us another helper. Even as I preach right now, the Holy Spirit is here because you welcomed him. Because you say, come, you need to welcome him. This is one thing I have seen with the Holy Spirit, even with the Father God and Son. You must welcome them. They are so polite. 
they will not invade your space. So you always need to invite them. Hallelujah. When you do that, they will respond. Ask, you shall receive. That he may be with you forever. You see, forever. You are never, never alone. There are times the Lord might cover your eyes that you do not see. There are times he might cover your senses when he's leading you by faith. Because we need that faith to move the mountains. We need that faith to operate in miracle signs and wonder. There are times the Lord cover you and you don't fear him or you might not fear the Holy Spirit. But do not go by that. Always go by his word which says he will be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Do you want to attract him? Do you want him to love you and be closer to you? Then be a person who is always a truth lover, a truth seeker. Never side with deception. And we are surrounded by people who are deceived, politicians who are deceived. There are always all types of lies all around us. This is why God gives you discernment. In this age where there is democracy, where people are running for presidents, you always need to know what is the truth. Because God will show you. And you need to line up with the truth. There is so much deception in the news. CNN, the father of lies, walking through them. And all the media that are anti-God, anti-Messiah, anti-Christ, you need to use your discernment to know them. Because if you do not see the truth, you will side with the lies. And this will push away the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of truth. Every time people believe a lie, even if they are born again a Christian, the Holy Spirit's heart is broken, so he retires. He starts going away, little by little. Sin, lies, pushes him away. Whom the world cannot receive. You are not of the world, so you must receive him. However, when you choose to side with the world, whenever you choose to believe in lies, he lives. The world doesn't see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you. Make room for him in you. Remember, he is the Holy Spirit. What does this mean? You must live holy. He does not go where people are living in a sin. Holy Spirit, welcome in this place. Welcome in me. Before you do that, always cleanse yourself. Be a people who hate sin. Be a people who hate what is wicked and evil. Then he will be with you. But not only that, he will be inside of you. Hallelujah. Amen. When the Holy Spirit is inside of you, the devil will be fully. But you need to know, there is no natural ground. You cannot be without something inside of you. It's either the Holy Spirit or it's somebody else. Very important that we understand God. We must study His Word. We must open our mind. So the Lord speaks here to us and He says, he will be with you forever. 
I have seen this of the Lord face to face. I have seen in a face to face encounter that he really never leaves us alone. There was one time we asked the Lord in our face to face encounter if he would give us privacy because we wanted to make a birthday surprising the party. And you know, when you ask, he's the father, he's going to give you. It was a good thing. And he thought about it. He said, okay, children, I will let you do that. When we had the meeting, however, guess who came? The Holy Spirit came in our midst. You might wonder, what for? When your eyes are deeply opened spiritually, you might see him. Uh, it's not just the wind, it's not just the air. When your spirit uh, eyes are opened but deeply, you will see that he is a man. He has the feature. Remember, we were created in God's image. You are created in the image of Jesus, in the image of God, in the image of the Holy Spirit. Let us create a man in our image. The Holy Spirit is not just a dove. Sometimes he takes on that form, but he is a person. And it's not it. It's he. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, he will be with you forever. When we ask the Lord, the Holy Spirit had to come. And we realize, because we cannot have a meeting with uh, If we say, Jesus, we really need a privacy for a few minutes, if Jesus were to leave us, and the Father God were to leave us, and the Holy Spirit were to leave us, we are finished. We cease to exist. So if you study the Bible, you will see that they have never left mankind without a presence, without being in touch. I'm going to give you another example of this one. Seems like weird, but you know, so was Jesus. You know, Jesus did many weird things. It does not make sense. But you know why it doesn't make sense? We are not of this world. We are of another kingdom. Hallelujah. We must let go our earthly standard and begin to open ourselves to our heavenly standard. There was another time I was really burned up. I was going through so much. And the Lord said, I am going to send you away for three days. So the Lord told me to park and to leave the church, go in a place, in a retreat place. And the Lord, surprisingly, he said, my daughter, I am going to go with you. So I will leave the church and we will go in a place where we will be by ourselves. And then, to my amazement, this is what he said. My father, my father said, he is going to be with the church while you and I will go in a place for, you know, just go away. He called it a honeymoon. So, here we see he's about to go. But when he goes, Remember, he ascended into heaven, not only in spirit, but he even received his glorified body. Remember when the women came, they could not find the body. The grave was empty. When Jesus uh, was risen, he became the first fruit, the first one among the dead to be raised up. And it was not only his spirit, but his body as well. You remember the tomb was empty. Now he goes, he's truly in heaven. But he says, I will not leave you as an orphan. I will send him. In verse 26, he says, But the helper will come, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things. He is the one who teaches us the Bible. There are people who read the Bible and they do not understand it. 
because you can only understand by the Holy Spirit. There are many false preachers, false prophets we have today, and they have radio show, they go, they show you how a miracle cannot happen anymore, and they use the scripture. They are blinded, they have scales over their eyes. They do not understand why, because they have rejected the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one who can teach them. But since they rejected him, they are distorting the word of God. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes you smart. The Holy Spirit is the one who becomes your teacher and give you wisdom and give you insight that wherever you go, hallelujah, and you're full of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter. You are going to excel. He will teach you all things. It's not only even in the Bible. The Holy Spirit teaches you other things. Be a people who love to learn so that you can help more people. You know, there are many people on this earth who are in a desperate need of truth, of teaching, of uh, needing different help. Be like the little Holy Spirit here on earth. Be also a helper. And the more you know, the more you learn, the more you will help people. How are you going to learn? The Holy Spirit says, He will teach us all things. And He will bring to remembrance all that Jesus has spoken to us. You know, my friend, we read the Bible. As we read the Bible every single day, do you know where that information goes? It registers in your brain. And the Holy Spirit is behind all of this. And there are times if you're reading every single day and for years you're doing it, you will be amazed. Sometimes you feel like you don't know much, but when you get in a situation, a scripture will pop up. And it's a scripture that is a fit for the right moment. Who is behind that? It is the Holy Spirit. There are times, I don't know about you, but for me, He always reminds me what I need to do for the kingdom. So we are a very busy church and we are even about to be more busy than we have ever been before. Once we move into our headquarters, when we have all our studio, when we have all our computer, we are going to invade the world with the blessing of God. We are going to invade the whole world with the power of God. The Lord has told us there is going to be sleepless night. Why you do rest now? Because you're going to be very busy. So, the Holy Spirit brings to remembrance what you need to do in the kingdom. And not only does He remind me about the things to do in the kingdom, even in my personal life, He's that person who comes to you and He tells you, you did not read enough today. And so whenever you hear that voice, Heed him. He is the person who will come and remind you, you need to call so and so. You need to minister and he will show you. So open your ears and listen. Don't listen to the devil. The devil's voice can never be original because the devil doesn't create. The voice that you hear the first time, it is the Holy Spirit. Whenever you get an idea to create something, listen it very well and write because it is the Holy Spirit. And after the Holy Spirit speak, and maybe you begin to pray about it, you begin to get ready to do that, the devil somehow he will find out. I told you how demons follow us. They are watching us. If they cannot get something from the mind, hallelujah, they can get in the mind if you entertain evil thoughts. They will be able to know what you think. 
But if you're living for God, hallelujah, then how can they know? They know because they follow us. And the devil will come and take on the voice and he cannot create, so he always go by the original voice you hear and he began to bring doubts. He began to show you how it's impossible. So my friend, always remember the original voice. Where you got that idea? Write it down. Do not forget to write it down because once the Holy Spirit reminds you, he's not going to do it always and forever. And when you get an inspiration, write it down because the word of God is like the water that flows. Once that water flows and it falls into the lake or wherever it needs to go, you cannot bring it back. You need to write. If you don't write, you are going to forget it or record. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit is a very important in our lives. Tomorrow we will talk more about the Holy Spirit. Please do not miss because there are many more things that he wants to reveal to you. Today, I wanted just to come and to get a fellowship and to talk about the Holy Spirit. My question to you, have you received the Holy Spirit? You need to receive him. Lord Jesus, pray with me. Just repeat after me if you cannot make your own prayer. Cleanse us by your holy blood. We want you, Holy Spirit. a 
remember to discover that. God bless you. Do not miss tomorrow. Invite all your friends. Come join me. Let us grow to know the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen.